Hi everybody, my name is Ben Betts and I'm the Chief Exec here at HC2 Labs. I'm just going to take a moment to show you some of the key features of Learning Locker version 2. When you first install Learning Locker, you'll be taken to this home page to log in. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill out one I made earlier. After logging in, you're going to get a little pop-up that says choose your organisation. Now, Learning Locker is a multi-tenant platform. That means you can have many organizations within a single installation. But to begin with, if you've got a fresh install, you'll just have one. So select that, and in you go. Now, my Learning Locker's got a little bit going on here because I've, I've used it, but yours will probably be blank. It will probably open out with just a sample dashboard that is completely blank. What we're going to do is just tweak through a few of the settings to fill it up with a few charts like this one. So moving to the left-hand nav bar, what we see when we log into Learning Locker are these three broad top-level nav headings, data, people, and settings. Data is where you'll spend most of your time. This is where you can create visualizations, understand the data that's coming in, and build dashboards. People is where you can spend a little bit of time understanding some of the data you've got coming in about individuals. Every time a new individual is seen in Learning Locker, it will create a new identity for them, and it will append identity information. This is an area where we can import and add additional data to, to pull in non-XAPI data, like a person's function or job title, that might not be a part of the actor uh, information that we get into the XAPI statements. You can also reconcile people together, so if you have multiple identities for the same person, those can be merged into one. Settings has got a whole heap of stuff inside it. Perhaps most significantly, it has the, uh, the secondary nav element stores. In Learning Locker, the concept of a learning record store is merely a bucket. You can have many learning record stores, and you can query across them all at once. In this case, I just have a single one called my new XAPI store. It's got 929 statements in it, but I could add a new record store at any time I wanted. In order to insert data into a record store, I need to create a client. A client is a set of authentication credentials that I can use to insert or read data from a particular learning record store. So here's one that's already available. New XAPI store client. We have information like the key and secret that you'll often be asked for if you're gonna put data into a learning record store. And then you have a little bit about the, the scope of what this authentication can do. Can it read, can it write, can it access profiles? You also have a drop down here that allows you to select which XAPI learning record store you should put data into when using this key and this secret. Settings also provides areas for you to manage users. These are users that can log in to the Learning Locker interface and to classify those users with different roles. Learning Locker ships with two roles, an administrator and an observer. And you can either customize these roles or create your own by using the drop down here. The advantage of using this fine grain permission store is that you can really zero in on a least privileges principle, only giving out access to data and settings and tools that an individual should have access to. Finally, settings also has organizations. This is where you can click the add new button to create a second, third, fourth, and so on multi-tenant organization. Organizations are different from learning record stores. You cannot query across organizations and you'll need to create new users in that organization. They are, in essence, not necessarily visible to each other unless you're the super admin. Having covered people and settings very briefly, I just want to flick back to data. Dashboards is your home area. This is where you're going to land each time you log in. And dependent on the privacy and permission settings, you'll see a range of dashboards that have been created. This one has bar charts, pie charts, a frequency graph. These have all been created using the Visualize tab. This is where you can create new visualizations, thinking about, well, maybe I want to look at a bar chart of which score, which learners have done which activity. Inside each of these areas, you'll have a series of different tools you can specify, such as the X and Y axes for your graph, the series, which data should be pulled in to which series. And you can also look at the source data here. So we can flip this around and actually look at a table of what this data really is.
Everything in Learning Rocket automatically saves. So if I change this to top scoring learners to uh, all time top scoring learners, you'll see saved flash across the top bar. You don't need to hit a save button in Learning Rocket. Everything is automatically saved as you go. The source area is where you can see all of your data coming into the Learning Record Store in the first place. Anytime you have any XAPI data coming into any of the Learning Record Stores you've created, it will appear here. You can hit the Load More button to see it as you go, and you can use what we call the Query Builder to narrow down the view. You can build up your queries by selecting actors, verbs, and objects right here on the screen. So if I want to see just what John Smith has been up to, I can click John Smith, and you'll notice that the Query Builder has now been expanded with the variable John Smith in the who category. This query builder is pretty clever, so you'll only be able to insert or search query on data that is existing in Learning Locker. If I type in viewed here, which doesn't exist, I won't get anything, I can't do it. You can only ever select variables that exist in Learning Locker. This can go deep because you can store all sorts of context activities and groupings within the metadata of an XAPI statement. Learning Locker will account for all of that. This page also gives you an opportunity to export data. Up in the top right hand corner, you can open an export panel and create new exports. What this will allow you to do is to create a CSV download of a set of data. So here I've just added a new one and I get a range of columns uh, by default. So on the left hand side is my ability to add and remove columns from my CSV download. And on the right hand side is a preview of the top 10 bits of data that are gonna be returned here. So in this one, I'm gonna end up with a, a column called version, as in which version of the XAPI has been used. I'm gonna end up with a unique ID, the statement ID, and I'm gonna end up with a timestamp, the time at which it was inserted. I can add back a new column at any time I want. I can call it name, for instance. And then you can use the type ahead to fill out either something from the actor, the verb, the object, or whatever metadata you want. So if I select statement.actor and scroll across, then we'll see John Smith has been selected. The query that you have at the bottom of the screen will populate the export at the top. So I only see John Smith here because my query is limited to John Smith now here. When you're happy with it, you can hit the download button and the download will become available in the Downloads tab shortly. Final area in data is called Statement Forwarding. This allows you to automatically send out incoming data to a third party system. So for example, if I want to send certain data to an analytics cluster, I might set up a statement forward. This gives me an opportunity to specify things like the protocol over which I'm going to send the data, the URL I'm going to send it to, and any authentication details. And this query builder is back. So what this allows you to do is to filter which data should be forwarded to this URL. This is an automatic webhook that will retry until it completes the activity. All of these visualizations and data things can be put onto a dashboard really quite simply. So here I have one with three charts on it to begin with. If I flick back to my new dashboard and click the add widget button, I just get a simple drag and drop area that I can resize as I see fit. If I click Settings, then I get the opportunity to choose a visualization. Remember that I changed the name of that one to be All Time Top Scoring Learners. So I select it, I give it a title, Learner Leaderboard, and that's it. I have a dashboard with a visualization. You can share this with the world using the Share button at the top of each dashboard page. So if I click Share, then I'll have a series of options. By default, each dashboard is locked down. You can't share it with anyone, but you could open it up and say, yep, you can share this link with anyone in the world. And if they open up a new tab and go to it, then they'll see exactly the dashboard you've just created. Alternatively, you can lock it down so that only certain domains can access this. This is useful if you want to embed a dashboard on an iframe inside a learning management system or an intranet. And you can also pass query variables to this dashboard as well. So you can only allow certain actors' data to be brought forward into a dashboard that's being embedded. This can help with data privacy to ensure that even if the query included learners that it shouldn't, they're filtered out before somebody else can see your dashboard. 
There's an awful lot more to see and do in Learning Locker, but as for an overview, data, people and settings, this video has given you a quick understanding of what you can get from each.